and straight away Dragon Ninja's banning out the Falstad. Not even hesitating. They must have sort of, Pesky Fan Club must have been mm. like, get that Falstad out of there. And we're seeing the Kerrigan ban as well. Ban, not ban, oh my goodness. Um, it's interesting. We've seen Kerrigan played a lot. Are people sort of worried about her? Are gaming gladiators, they know what she's sort of capable of. They must well, just not want to We've seen her. a lot of recent changes. And so a lot of people mm. looking at new heroes in the scene, how they interact. And so the power levels have shifted around a lot. I think that's what we see a lot in tonight's drafting and banning is that regards. So look at Greymane picked up by Dragon Ninja's great diving hero. But look at that, Gaming Gladiators. We've talked about her a bit tonight. And I don't think we've seen her much in a sense of a ban or in a hero selection. But there she is, Zagara, the Brood Mother. This has traditionally been one of her best maps because the creep tumors she can place down all over the place to provide you with great vision. But with the new rework recently done to her, she is an incredible scout, lane bully, really split pusher. So I'm excited to see how gaming gladiators, how, how they build her, and how Dragon Ninjas respond to that. It was amazing, like, getting her in. I think it's going to be a very solid pick that sort of pays off for them. As we said, Zagara, she can do so much on this map. It's one of the more larger maps that is sort of available on the HOTS roster. And just having vision is everything. When the tribute spawns, mm. if you can get the jump on your sort of enemies, it means a lot. So vision can help win games, and Zagara provides a lot of it. So it was a very smart choice, and I'm surprised we haven't seen her before, not even on Sky Temple. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's... I, I don't think she gives super as much advantage on Sky Temple, because it's quite big, so you can have vision of an enemy's pathing, but to be able to rotate to them and actually do something, there is a bit of a time delay. Yeah. So and your enemy goes, hey, there's creep here. I probably don't want to be here for too long. <laughs> However, this one is a little bit of a much smaller map, so they don't have as much time to go, oh, what, is that creep on the ground? I better get, oh, no, there's everyone on top of me. So, all right, gaming gladiators. So, getting back to the draft, we've got Uther, we've got Kelthus. Good, Kelthus is always a good pickup. Always like seeing him. Strong mage, a lot of damage. Uther, we saw how super strong he was last game, and with the big dive coming out from Grey Main, followed up by a Divine Shield, you can see the potential for play there. Uh, gaming gladiators has removed Murden from the mix. Going right, well, you haven't picked a tank yet. We've got our tank, so hey, we'll just remove. Um, <laughs> Someone that is detrimental to where we're going. And you know, Meriden's just oh, yeah. a good all-round tank, so... He's good all-round. He doesn't die thanks to his passive kicking in. Oh, so but look at this. How nice up. this. Dragon is like, well, guess what? We've got a support. So <laughs> you guys, we're going to ban out a support so you can't pick him. I and love it. Ban, ban attack, up. ban support. <laughs> And um, it's interesting, we saw a lot of Greymane bannings going on as well, so it's mm. like they've swapped out the Kerrigan and now we're going to see Greymane in play. And it's going to be interesting because they've got a Zagara, if ETC and Anubrat can't peel, which is going to be hard to say because they've got mm. a lot of tools at their disposal to do so, but if they can't, Zagara's going to be sitting bait for Greymane's claws. He's got so much burst. Yeah, it's... Um... I mean, this is a little bit of the rework of Zagara. You used to be able to get in... Like the creep, you'd be able to play very safe on the creep. Uh, she's, you know, she's no longer at Bowl of the Storm at 20. She's not getting the speed increase on the creep, I believe. God, I hope I'm right when saying that. I'm confident I am. She doesn't get the speed increase on creep anymore. So she's always been a little bit, you, know, you always have to be a little bit careful of her in the lane, not to be too advanced. Because she doesn't have a strong escape mechanic. They've made that effectively even weaker on Zagara now. So how they play on that. Like that. That's the trouble with the Jaina here. Sorry, with the Zagara here. Against the Greymane, you can dive in, can't necessarily get away from it. Kelthus locks down. Thrall Eamon with the Asunder from behind locking her in place. So it's going to have to be... The Zagara is going to have to be particularly careful not to push too hard and get caught out of position. Um, obviously on the creep now, she does have increased range on the patch changes. Recent patch changes. So you know that sort of the change that she needs to be so far forward. But it's still a concern. And it's an even bigger concern now that Dragon Ninjas have locked in Diablo. Great ganking tank. Go in there, overpower, throw someone over the shoulder. Amazing displacement. Follow up with a KT with a gravity lapse. And you know what? That's, that's a hero picked off. It's a good, strong pick. And he also has a potential to get double lives if he collects enough souls so he can get back mm. into the action after throwing his life on the line. So we've got two sort of double life champions here with Diablo and Uther. So it's going to be hard to keep Dragon Ninja down this game. Oh, maybe. It's the Brightwing has been selected. Great polymorph potential there. We're just going to see Diablo obviously charge in. Goes to make a play like that. Can be polymorphed out of it. Or even Greymane diving in. 
polymorphed out of it. Instantly Throw polymorphed. Of polymorphed mm. out of it. So really and nice then whoever player. gets polymorphed, they're at the mercy of gaining gladiators to be punched on. So That's it from Thrall. Moves on Diablo. High Cup is playing on Greymane. And IY is on Kelthus. On the red-hand side of the map, it is the gla Gaming Gladiators. And they're here to show that they, too, can be a king of an evening. And they're going to really take it to the Dragon Ninjas and give it their best. Five, we have H Whiskey playing three, on a new rack. Delphi is on Brightwing. Azami is playing on... Oh, I can't see the hero. Uh, Li Ming. <laughs> Li Ming. It She's is just hiding there with a tiny slender model. Laugh Virus is on Zagara. And of course, Coronan is on ETC. Oh no! Oh, right, Zagara like... early on gets caught out. Oh, low health! Gets taken out by Moose with a Shadow Charge on the Diablo. And a nice early kill on Zagara. They are a little... Possibly going to lose out a little bit of lane experience now. It's only very minor. But... You know, maybe that this could be the you know the huge exciting factor for the rest of the game. And three bit counts, and that just means it was precious seconds that Zagara didn't have creeping up the lane that she's going to yeah. stay in, and it creep is what she needs to sort of you know really choke that lane and make it her own. And now she's missing out on precious seconds of it. And I just praised the teams on um, not going too hard at the beginning. And we saw Lafaris; he really wanted to get the creep in there for his team, but he lost his life doing so. So I don't think it was worth it. Yeah, it's just a. A dangerous position to be in when you don't know where the enemy team is. So maybe, maybe miscommunication, maybe it's dangerous play. Look, even there, here we go. Moose goes in. Lathvar's in a lot of trouble. Hux comes up with a stun from Uther. The body blocked in, and it's another kill on Zagara. That's what I was saying during this drafting phase here with Zagara that she's just got to be so careful what's going on because you know it's it, once she gets she's a vision. It's sitting dark. Yeah. And can be can be really bullied by the Diablo play there, by the, by the Diablo, even followed up by a new great stun comp. You know what? K team's down the bottom. Gravity laps can come out as well. <laughs> exactly. There was a lot going on, and Paul Zagara was probably just. I could imagine him just sort of shouting in the team, being like, "Guys, where was the missing in action call here? Like, you've got to keep me safe so I can creep up the lane and do what I do best." But you know, there's so much going on in this map, and they're just trying to settle in their lanes. They don't want Zagara. We know that Dragon Ninja, they don't want Zagara to sort of, as I said, get make that lane her own. They're just making sure that she thinks twice about it. And they just want to let her know, we've got a Diablo. We can force these early ganks. So watch out. Yeah, she'll be playing very safe. Now, interesting thing, like I said, new Zagara, new type of build, new talent tree. Has taken Infest at level 1. Now, this is a really cool new talent. This is effectively the ranged minions in a group deal an additional 200% damage plus an extra 1% damage based on how much siege damage Zagara has dealt. Uh, it makes like said, it makes pushing a lane on Zagara so much stronger now when she's nearby ranged minions. Alright, the tribute has spawned. We see the blue team, we see Dragon Ninjas have positioned themselves, well, they've positioned themselves in a great place to take this tribute. Not holding on, taking away from the run in. Oh no, what's that? ETC's in a lot of trouble there. He's been locked in dead. He's nearly dead. Greyman goes and gets the final kill. Bad, a bad choice there by ETC, getting just sectioned off. They've really just got to poke into these. I feel like the gaming gladiators. We see High Cup there is going to pick up the tribute, and a, a nice early lead just keeps compounding for Dragon it's Ninjas. Just a lot of domination. They just looked at ETC. They're like, "You're not a tank yet. Just calm down." And they focused everything into him, and they just picked up the kill. They don't. They're, they're basically they're taking what they can get. They're being very reactive as well. And they're playing it quite smart, um, Dragon Ninja. They're playing a strong early game so far. And they're even, it looks like Greymane wants to solo the um, Siege Camp, not Siege Camp, the Bruiser Camp, sorry, pardon me. Um, and it looks like he might get it. So it's going to put added pressure onto the lane. Uther's coming up to top him up, and he's going to secure the Bruiser so they can keep dominating and sort of keep their experience lead that they've gotten. Yeah, it's just a, they're just playing, like, they're just playing so well. Like we talked about gaming gladiators, they got a lot of CC, but not, if they're not together, it's not that effective, and they are a little bit more of a late game comp. they are going to be bigger plays once their heroics are in action, but they may not be able to get to level 10 in time for them to be that impactful. Nick Tribute is spawning, it is in the favour of Dragon Ninjas, in favour of the King, as should be, says the Dragon Ninjas. 
and Highcut's going to pick this up. With the experience difference at the moment, it looks like Gaming Gladiators are just going to try and soak lane instead. But Zagara, out of position, is getting bullied again, taken out. <laughs> Missed the memo. No one else was rocking up to that tribute. Except She's Zagara just not still having a good win. game. Left Virus is just not having a good game. He just wants to be able to do Zagara things. And, you know, Dragon Ninja, they're like, we're not having any of this. We're not going to let you be a lane bully. Instead, we're going to bully you. We're taking the fight to you. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And they're just showing it. I mean, Zagara's just going to... Game players have to try and slow this game down. Like, going on right now, they've left the bottom lane open. There's actually experience being left here. Game players isn't gaining that. They're, you know, Dragon Teams are compounding this. They left it totally up to Zagara. Someone should have rotated down bottom. Not Like I said, not to kill the heroes. No one's going to 1v3. They're not, there's no heroes like that. But they, they, they're losing soap. They're losing experience. They're on an entire level down at the moment. And they just don't... This is not a position they want to be in. It's Look at this! They're poised for the Zuzgara kill again! Lapfires, what is going on? You can't see them. You don't know where they're on the map. Oh, and Delphi has come down. It might be a two for oh, none. No. It is two kills. Gaming gladiators. Just making very, very silly mistakes. It's silly. I could see what Brightwing was doing. This time he's like, maybe if I'm there I can help. Because he doesn't want Lafaris mm. to go again. He doesn't want them. But in doing so, it might have been better to just leave him. Lafaris was caught. He was going to die. Now just another body is basically taken out of the fight. And we can see gaming gladiators are just sort of chasing Dragon Ninja around the map. They just can't keep up. Like right now they've secured boss. And now that's going to be another massive sort of push down bot. They're just... They're going for this, but it looks like Dragon Ninja, they want to rotate to their boss, and I'm not sure they'll get there in time. Oh, they, oh. they might. It might be enough to distract them. Oh no, ETC's coming, he's been body blocked by Thrall, throw him down, Polymorph goes under him, ETC and, well, the whole team basically, takes out the roll, and they pick up a boss, that was a nice pick up there, even with their heroics, they still, well, ETC, sorry, Thrall by himself couldn't advance into ETC, beautiful play. This Gaming. was the play that they needed. So Gaming Gladiators has successfully sort of got themselves back in. They're going to soak till 10 because they know that Dragon Ninja have it. But it was well played. They picked off the Thrall. They sort of counted on him, I guess, being there first because they knew sort of Dragon Ninja was sort of more towards the bot side of the map. And it was good that they focused turn, took him out of the fight instead of letting him sort of regroup with the rest of the team because it could have been another story. Yeah, no, it's just... It's it's a beautiful play. It worked really well. I was concerned that maybe Dragon Ninja could rotate up to the top and punish them trying to go for a boss a little bit late. And, you, and they knew, they knew that, oh, hang on, level 10 has been picked up for uh, Gaming Gladiators, so let's just do a quick heroic pickup. Uh, KT has the Phoenix. We see Greymane pick up, go for the throw, roll with Sunder. Uther has picked up Divine Shield and Apocalypse for Diablo. We see Disintegration being picked up for Li Ming. Now the Ninus Network, Vandy. We talked about this. Here it is making a play. It's here. Emerald Wind coming out of the Bright Wing. Mosh Pit. And then obviously Cocoon. It's interesting. Like, we talked about it. I potentially, after seeing Lafaris sort of struggle with the ganks, I'm surprised he didn't take more to sort of help defend himself. But I think he's getting back into the rhythm of the game. We can see him starting to do the push. There's lots of creep now. So he's feeling better about it. Let's put it that oh, way. This, is, this could be a bit of a dangerous part. Moffat goes on. Apocalypse has come out. That's why Apocalypse was taken. ETC doing a good job to stay alive. But we're going to see. Oh no, we're going to see IY rotate up. Gets him. Gets a Nubarak, Nubarak doing a lot of damage there. Overextending by Gaming Gladiators. Can they advance out? The Emerald Wind doing a good job. Can they get the Diablo kill? No, the Divine Shield comes out. Sunder comes out. Three heroes down for Gaming Gladiators. And they have to back away from this tribute. It is a two for two tribute, which means that we're going to see a third picked up. And now a huge advantage is going to go. That was so well play. played by both teams, but the Divine Shield, the Clutch Divine Shield, that was insane. It basically prevented Diablo from going down, and they wasted all their skills on it just to not pick up the kill. Like That was massive and very well played by the Uther indeed, by Hux. Yeah, and in the last game, Hux was playing a great Uther as well, so it's obviously a hero he's very comfortable with. And he's and got his timings down pat, and as you said, it's what separates the good Uthers from the great Uthers. Yeah. Well, that one there was so clutch and so low health, and it just kept Diablo up, and he backed out. He didn't hang, hang around. He was like, yep, when this wears off, I'm very killable, and backed out straight away. So very, very good play. I think the ETC before going into that camp, trying to distract 
Like I, I saw the I saw the potential of what he was trying to do, but his mosh pit has a limited effect because of the apocalypse taken by uh, Diablo. And that's why Diablo took it, as you said, it's their answer for it. They're like, if you're going to just sit there in the same spot, I'm going to trigger my ultimate and cancel yours. So that's why that's he took it. it. And <laughs> Anubarak, he took the cocoon we were talking about, so we weren't crazy. We did forecast that right. We, I feel like pretty good. We forecasted two heroics, so go us. And it's interesting to see how they're using them all. It's making me quite excited. So essentially... Oh, right, uh, fight breaks out. Big Apocalypse comes on. Big Stun goes to Gaming Gladiators. Here are the falling. Three fall. Everyone's going down. It was just a big slaughter fest against Gaming Gladiators. A big push here can be now seen by the Dragon Ninjas. They could possibly take this fortification or this keep in the mid lane right now. Bring so much pressure on. Moves actually almost being taken out by Lee Ming. But backs away. Still fine. Obviously Uther's around and pop him up if he gets too trouble. But too troublesome, and this keep is definitely going down. Like Gaming Gladiators, they were starting to look a little bit good for a while there, but that apocalypse, even in those tight corridors, could just be so detrimental. And you just saw it got basically the entire team for our Gaming Gladiators. We and saw them just, just get Hoover. deleted. Exactly. It was just game over for them. They just couldn't, there was nowhere to run. Like CC went down, and then they just all started getting hammered on, and there's nothing they could do there. As you said, it was such a tight corridor. And this Diablo is just showing he's a force to be reckoned with. He's getting in their faces. He's focusing the right targets. And as I was trying to say, Anubarak, um, he put his um, cocoon on IY and essentially, uh, sorry, not IY, on um, the Li Ming as well. And it's just trying to like lock her out of the fights. Not Li Ming, what am I saying? Yes. Anubarak put it on Kael'thas. That's all I'm trying to say. My goodness. <laughs> you can tell it's that time of the night now. <laughs> It is. It's getting there. It's, it's the last game, and we're just seeing a great play here by Dragon Ninja just playing so well. Moves has a lot of damage, but I don't think it's too much detrimental. We see the power slide from EDC getting the hell out of there. He doesn't want to hang around for this gig anymore, but both teams really want that boss. I think it's going to be in the favor. EDC is trapped. Moshpit goes out. Apocalypse goes out as well. We got. Whoa, whoa! Who just exploded just then? Everyone that just exploded just then. That's a five-man wipe against Gaming Gladiators. That's, uh, well, that was really unfortunate. I thought Gaming Gladiators had gained the upper ground, but then the apocalypse went down once again, and we saw the tables turn. It's, it's just quite... utter, utter denial. I mean, it's, it's a... In such tight corridors on this map, and when you're fighting for all these close-up objectives, I guess that's why Moops went with Diablo. It was a very strategic pick. Yep. Um, he must feel comfortable playing it on this map, and that's why he went for it. It's doing a lot of work for their team and setting up a lot of the plays for well, sort just, of Dragon Ninjas. It's, a, it's such a nice cancellation against that mosh pit. You know, I was expecting him to see a bit more play with the cocoon going on to Diablo, allowing ETC to sort of get the mosh pit off, so like a coordinated attack there. But the gaming gladiators just aren't sort of getting it out. Diablo's not letting them. Uh, when they try and engage in, they're all close together, so Moop's just going, time, you know? Time the monster. I think there was a little bit of a dance there coming out of Diablo just then. He's feeling on top of the world. He has time to dance. A little bit of bad mouthing going on by Diablo, or maybe a bit of sport from Jimmy. He's like, come and get me. I'm here if you need me. And another fight breaking out. The closest we can get to a bit of our fan service in here at the store. All right, so behind boss. this. Yeah, well, this boss is going to be a big push. They've already pushed in the mid lane. Another kill on Brightwing. Put it sectioned out there. Greymane just going to town. Uh, you know, stun CC section off, and look at this, they're just bullying ETC now, not allowing them to get away. The level difference is too great. This game is just so in Dragon Ninja's favor right now. And Gaming Gladiators, just what can they do? They, they, I don't think they can take this. The core's being beaten on. The boss is about to arrive. Lefer is trying about his best. He picked up Diablo. So he luckily, Lefer, he got a bit. He's just poking at them from this form. <laughs> There's nothing he can do. We're doing more wailing on the core. He's nah, that's his it. Best. The core goes down. GG Gaming Gladiators have failed to compete.